Welcome to the, uh, the Alexia Grant Competition Judging 2020 version. Uh, this is a historical year um, for many reasons. Um, we're in the 30th anniversary of the Alexia. We're fortunate to have Peter and Aphrodite to Sarasate here. They are the ones who founded the Alexia Foundation and the competition in honor and memory of their daughter, Alexia. So it's wonderful to have you here. It's notable also because um, the foundation moved all assets and responsibilities for the Alexia to Syracuse University this year. So this is the first time that everything has happened without their great uh, direction and guidance, uh, con uh, regular input and feedback and help. So I've, I've been like nail biting the whole year without you <laughs> is what it amounts to. Um, but your spirit and, and what I learned from eight years, seven years of doing this with you has, has informed every decision and every action. Uh, my name is Mike Davis, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I'm director of the Alexia Now and a visual communication professor at Syracuse University. We're fortunate to have a powerful set of judges and judging panel this year, Leila Amatula Berain, Noel Flores Tear, and Joshua Rashad McFadden. Uh, also joining us today are many members of the Alexia Advisory Council and the Alexia Prejudging Panel, which changes slightly every year. Uh, our, our team this year is comprised of myself, Eileen Mignoni, who is the communications director for the Alexia, has been for the last eight, eight, nine years. And then two new house graduate students who are actually making this happen. Zoe Davis will be running the Lightroom catalog we'll use to see entries, submissions. And Jessica Stewart will be reading the proposals and should questions related to the aspects of the proposals. She's, I'm sorry, she's actually reading the synopsis in this space, but if you have questions beyond that, she can answer those judges. Uh, talk to you a little bit about the process we're gonna use today. It is very methodical and no huge leaps through things as they progress. We'll just gradually get to know the work better and better. The judges uh, have spent up to two weeks with the 20 finalists uh, submissions in each of the student and professional categories. The 20 that they've been reviewing in each of those 40 total were the result of a pre-judging panel of 11 professionals uh, going over every submission and rating those. And then I looked at their rates and determined which of those 20 in each category would move to the final round for judging. It's a... Uh, significant process that I believe renders uh, a broad impression of what the strongest work is for us to review today. Today we'll start by just reading the synopsis and looking at each submission in the student category. We'll then we'll go through a second pass and judges will, any one of the judges can say, I would like to move this submission forward. When we get to the end of the 20, we'll go back through again. And just to make sure none of the others that were not moved yet forward yet, any of you could still move one forward. Then we'll look at what you've moved forward and have a conversation about what, what elevated those to that point. And then go through again and you can offer to move any one of you at this point still one of the, or those submissions forward as you deem. And we'll just gradually get to a fine set, a refined set, and then have a conversation when you think it's time to determine who the top three recipients of the, among the students would be 
literally a first per first place essentially to receive the student grant and then a second and third sort of an award of excellence. So once uh, Zoe, you wanna go ahead and launch and share screen. The, uh, well, figure we'll take a break after the first pass, but if any of you needs to step out, don't hesitate to say so. Um, my suggestion on how you look at these entries would be to escape out of full screen view and then drag the window to fill your screen. That will put the video of the judges and myself and Eileen and should be just um, on the top above. Just a reminder that if you are not one of the judges, Eileen, Jess, or Zoe, to turn off your video and audio. All right. And for those, uh, there is information you can garner just from looking at that left side window, you can see which of the entries have video connected to them. And you can see how many still images are connected to each of the entries. So that's informative in and of itself. All right. Uh, one other note, I guess, is you can ask for captions at any point, judges, and Zoe will open up the caption for the image that you're interested in. You can identify it by the number sitting above the image. All right, Jess, are you ready? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Here we go. This project is about accountability, transparency, and informed citizenry, and a visual record of this chapter in American history. It is about adding humanity and nuance to protest reporting, and it is about defending the values that this country was founded on through photo and video documentation, and then using those visuals to create a mechanism for police accountability. And the title is, This is America in Defense of Democracy 2020.
And it's worth mentioning that uh, each of these submissions has up to a 500 word proposal associated with them as well. And the judges have had time to read each of the proposals in advance of this judging. So we aren't reading the proposals in this setting. Um, also, this entry does come with video. When the entries have video, I'll be adding it in the chat. So judges, if you want to refresh on the video, we can pause it. And while you do that, or if you feel like you've seen it enough, we can move on. But for those attending, you could watch the video at your will. Um, I don't know about Leila and Joshua, but I'm comfortable moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, we can move forward. Okay. So just at the title at this point, and then we can go. Yeah, cool. We lived in our heads. My project is about child abuse and having navigated childhood with an abusive parent. A narcissistic family has designated roles influenced by the narcissistic parents. In my family, the roles were enabler, golden child, scapegoat, surrogate parent, lost child, and mascot. This picture story reveals the aftermath those childhood roles played on our current adult psyche. It's worth, worth noting, um, as the profession moves forward and uses more diverse approaches to telling a greater range of types of stories, I think it's important that we as a competition recognize any, uh, actually what is addressed and, and acknowledge that there are many ways to tell stories that can go beyond simply showing images are only showing images. Images still have the greatest power, I believe, but other story forms or media connected to images can elevate sometimes beyond what the images alone could. So just worth saying at this point. I'm good with going next. Me too. I'd encourage anyone, though, to watch, in that case, watch the video. I think it's helpful. Yeah. I'm okay with going forward. Mm -hmm. okay. Cha Chakra, Tea Tales of Bangladesh. Chachakra, Tea Tales of Bangladesh, is a research-based long-term documentary photography research project that tells the story of the most popular drink of the world, tea. The project has been photographing the tea community of Bangladesh for five years with an ethnographic approach. It depicts the everyday life of the agrarian community who are closely connected not only with the drink, 
but with the plant and the environment as well that resonates resistance as a cultural expression. This entry has two videos and the links are in the chat. forward yeah okay front yard front yard is a pandemic series that portrays families in their yards Four by five large format black and white prints are then handed to the families to color as they wish, creating a collaborative dialogue between the photographer and the people being photographed. At a time of social distancing, this exchange is also a tactile affirmation of the world we live in. How's the pacing for you, judges? Fast enough, about right? It's pretty good, pretty good pacing for me. Okay. That's right. We've been practicing. It's perfect, perfect pace. <laughs> Where is home?
Due to the oppressive actions, massacres, and resettlement plans made by the Turkish governments, my family had to leave their homeland. They moved to the safety of Istanbul, where I was born. I felt displaced from a home that I'd never known, and this project is a quest to find where and what is my home for me, and to redis rediscover my identity as a Kurd, a member of the world's largest stateless nation. after incarceration. Roughly 210,000 women are incarcerated in the United States. 99,000 women are in state prisons and 111,000 are in jails. According to the Prison Policy Initiative, 80% of women in jails are mothers and most of them are primary take caretakers of their children. The Sentencing Project reports more than 60% of women in state prisons have a child under the age of 18. My project looks at the mothers reintegrating into society after incarceration. A new kind of tough. Ranch culture transforms in the American West. Melu Anderson and her multi-generational Montana ranch family live on the border of Yellowstone National Park. 
every day she sees the effects of a growing migration of people to the Intermountain West, fueled by climate change and now a pandemic. Development and an influx of people threaten the fragile ecosystem that surrounds and sustains the community. Melu and her family remain committed to finding solutions that embrace wildlife, biodiversity, science, and regener regenerative agriculture. And we're, we're pausing a little bit at the end here on, on the grid, just so you can sort of reabsorb at this level after having seen them. Yeah. If you don't need to linger at all, we could move faster, I guess. But. Okay. Climate Survival, Island Kudabdia. A remote island surrounded by the Bay of Bengal and very small in size called Kudabdia, located at the southwestern part of Bangladesh, is under threat to coastal erosion and climate change induced national, natural disaster. I want to continue this project to make widely and spend more times over there to document more deeply and observe the documents to observe and document the future of the island and to raise awareness about climate change around the world. Death Valley.
For the past three years, I have tried to document the different modalities of ecological impacts in Jatagoda. The pervasive presence of its uranium mining corporation exceeds its local environmental sphere and exerts its influence on the climate of the entire district and beyond. My work primarily documents the lives of people living in the vicinity of the mining corporation and the ill repercussions they bear due to the profound negligence in radioactive waste management. Invisible students. And um, just to make note, uh, some people propose a project for which they haven't started to make photographs. So they show projects that inform how they might approach the one they're proposing. And that's the case with this proposal. Invisible students. In my newly planned project, I will investigate the long-term effects of school bullying in Germany because victims struggle with the aftermath of their experiences even many years after graduation. Sean and Lashania. Sean and Lashania Thompson L are husband and wife, each carrying two murder charges. Their beautiful, loving relationship is strengthened by their remarkably similar pasts and motivations to right the wrongs of the criminal justice system that they experience the worst of. Sean and Lashania both work independently in community policing programs that aim to limit police presence in the underserved yet 
over patrolled neighborhoods of Washington, DC. Eight out of 10. On February 13th, 2018, a jitney bus struck my mom. As first generation immigrants, this unfortunate event altered the trajectory of my family. It also deepened my appreciation for the gift of each moment that I could still share with them. My aim is to capture moments and gestures in their daily lives of my parents that represent the family bond and values that has helped us overcome this obstacle in an unfamiliar environment. Okay. Down in the Delta. During a hot summer night, Larry smokes a cigarette outside before going back into the home of his friend Tamika in Clarksdale, Mississippi. They drink beer from a cooler because their refrigerator is not working. Larry says he has been institutionalized most of his life, and Tamika says she never been further than M Memphis or Jackson. The friends are one of many who are given small opportunities in their small town in the Delta. Okay. Leukemia fighters. Ask the children suffering from acute leukemia what they wanted to be if they had magic. their jobs and become forced to stop the treatment of their kids and watch them die.
Something only we know. With over 40 million members, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts are the biggest youth movement in the world. This project examines how an over 100 year old idea like the Scouts still creates meaning to young people. It is a story about growing up, friendship and intimacy, but also about the general social question, how we want to treat each other and how can we live together? Okay. Unintended consequences. What happened when the government took a decision which has a permanent impact on the socioeconomic conditions and demographic dislocation? It gave birth to slow violence that is neither magnificent nor immediate, rather cumulative, whose catastrophic repercussions are delayed for years to be noticeable, consequently creating the metabolic rift between people and the environment, displacing millions of people who are being forced into repeated internal migration between two and a maximum of 16 times. Okay. The Monet Archives. In the US, you can be killed just for being black in the wrong place at the wrong time. Being trans on top of that is pouring fuel on the fire that burns you. The government denies your rights. The police deny your dignity. The majority of humanity denies your validity. If you're black and trans, there's nowhere you can go to escape discrimination, violence, dehumanization, and hatred, except ballroom.
somewhere else than here. In Bangladesh, LGBTQ community is heavily suppressed due to the orthodox mentality of predominantly religious conservative societies. Moreover, Bangladeshi Penal Code section 377 criminalizes sexual acts against the order of nature. It is still in continuance, which makes it Ill illegitimate in this country. This work visualized the passage of transitioning LGBTQ individuals who explore their love, hope, and fantasy. Fanatical angst, homophobic isolation, and their findings of belief in diverse complexion within this passage. War notes. This project is about the Sy Syrian war, civil war, excuse me. This project is about the Syrian civil war that lasted 10 years. The stories have left many victims. This video did have, or this this project did have a video, and the link is in the in the chat. Did any of you want to review that before we go on? We can move on for me. I have a question about the video. Is it intended, like, as a first person? Did you guys understand that to be part of the video? I mean, we can come back to it later. It's fine. Oh. We'll move it forward. And the final of the 20. Yours in arms. Yours in arms explores how surrounding circumstances have shaped human behavior of student cadets in Nigeria.
right. So we, you've all now seen again that all 20 of the finalists. Really well done, Zoe and Jess. It's good process. Uh, would you like to take a break now before we go back through and start to move this, what you think of this, this stronger work forward? Um, can I get a small break? <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. Maybe Why don't we take uh, coffee? <laughs> How about taking 10 and return at 25 till? Okay. And so we maybe stop share for the moment, so. Okay. There we go. Mike, do you want to? All right, we're back. Um, hey, a couple other things to make note of. The, this is the first time the judging has happened remotely. Obviously with the pandemic, it's a smart decision. There is some sadness to not be in the same room with all of you. Um, and it's also only the second time in the 30-ish years that the judging has happened outside of Syracuse University. We judged last year at the Bronx Documentary Center in collaboration with the BDC. It was a super rich experience. And the progression of the competition as well, it's notable that uh, in the student submissions that came from 23 countries, throughout the world and in the professional submissions campaign came from 38 countries. So it's an increasingly international uh, expression that, that's represented through this competition. And that's exciting. We've worked hard to try to expand the voices that we get to hear. And it's wonderful to see that happening. So I'm curious, um, before we actually start moving any projects forward, what, what stands out for you or talk about some of the criteria that, that would determine whether you move things forward or not? And any of the three of you. Okay. And one way to start would be like, how important is that synopsis? Um, well, for me, the, the synopsis is very important. Um, I know, you know, you can't go into, on here, it's not going into much, much detail into the uh, intentionality behind um, the work, but it's very important for me to know um, the intention uh, and, and what this project, you know, how this project will serve people um, when it's, put out into the world, you know, then of course you have like technical quality, um, execution, uh, this idea of originality, whatever that means, right? But the synopsis is very important um, for me. I, um, for me, also the synopsis, and I'm also very interested in, um, you know, of course how, the project is going to live in the world, what the plans are, are there any concrete plans? Are there any contingency plans? And I'm also interested in how the photographer um, um, has encountered this project and their relationship to the people who they're photographing and documenting. So that's always very intriguing to me. I was gonna say the same thing. Um, like one of the things that I, I'm always curious about is that question of, you know, what is your relationship to the story? And I think that that's a helpful, I'm always kind of like trying to like read in between the lines to understand. Um, and again, without prejudgment, I mean, you know, nothing's to say that because some someone comes from a particular community that they'll do a better job of telling the story necessarily, but it's nice to kind of like, 
I'm curious, you know, for some of these folks, like, you know, um, what is your relationship to it? Right. Um, and then I have a question, this is uh, for you, Mike, and for the staff and the team, you know, this question of like a student application, I feel like in some cases, like, you know, a master's student and an undergraduate student and a self-taught student are coming in with kind of like, um, you know, I'm looking at some of these as really like excellent for students and, and like, you know, you see where you want to encourage some of the projects because you're like, you know, this person is clearly on the right track. Um, but as far as the, you know, awarding, you know, um, in terms of the values of, you know, the Alexia Foundation, just thinking about, you know, Alexia and who it was named for, is it, is it more considered to be, um, like, do you have any preference as far as like what type of student we're talking about? Um, you know, undergrad versus grad versus, I mean, I can't make assumptions, but like some of these, you know, you can see that there's a scale of experience here. Um, the short answer is no, um, there's no preconception of, of one level or another would have greater value to award. It is really the, the power of the proposal and the power of the imagery and the potential for what can be accomplished by this work growing from where it is. I mean, I know generally the level of education and of all of the entrants, and I could not tell you blindly who's a grad student, who's an undergrad. We have one PhD student went. So also the award is, is for students has grown to be thought of more as a fellowship and experience, a possible experience to expand from wherever they are. Um, that's great. That's good to know too. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and step away now for one minute and set her up so I can give my full focus when we um, start to move these forward. Is that okay with everybody? Just take, I'll take one minute. I'll be right back. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You bet. So what are some of the other, one of the questions a student asked in class the other day and, and when we do return to the grid view of who's here, you'll see some of the students are in the room from my class. It's an expectation of the class to be here and witness and there will be discussions about this next week in class. So what, one student asked, how do, how do judges distinguish between the weight, weighting what is proposed, the topic, the subject matter, and then the level of the work itself? Hmm. Can you ask that again? Sure. If you can divide uh, what is proposed between the topic itself, the subject matter, and then the strength of the image making, how do you find balance between those two? Oh man. Um, what, on what, from, from me, uh, it depends on what's being proposed. Um, and, you know, if, if the proposal is kind of far off from what we're seeing in the imagery, then that, that's been provided, then, you know, it might be a stretch. It might be a stretch. Have you, have you done this before? Do you know this community you're documenting or, um, you know, and, and the question, you know, things like that. Those are the questions I'm asking, you know, when I'm comparing and evaluating uh, projects and proposals. So we can assume that, you know, since the visual quality of imagery is nice, you know, it, it may be, you know, be beautiful photographs, but um, it takes a little bit, not a little bit, it takes a lot more than that, just beautiful photographs to have a project, um, uh, to make a project that has, you know, a certain social impact. Um, that maybe maybe a, a positive one. So really, I think we're looking for the foresight and the vision um, to be strong, um, strong enough to where we can say, okay, I believe that this person can execute a project on that caliber and um, deliver imagery 
um, deliver the imagery that you know they said they would deliver. That's really well put. I think the vision is also very important and the research that um, that is um, done beforehand so that when you are in the field making photographs, the approach um, is reflecting that um, as, as best as possible. But I do believe that, you know, you have to be very knowledgeable um, first, you know, as much as you can before you are embarking on, make, you know, this project, exploring, you know, whatever it is that you're exploring. That's important because then you'll see the, um, the kind of voids in the photographs. Okay, so you're saying the level of understanding informs the level of imagery mm -hmm. in a way? I think you see that a lot. Huh. That's phenomenal. The, you know, while we were asked the question of, because a student asked this last week, and how will judges weigh the, the topic itself that's being presented with the level of imagery, the perception of quality of the imagery, like which is more important? Or do they have to be the same? And Joshua and Layla just spoke to that a bit. So curious what they said, um, but I know we have to, you know, move on. I think for me, it's a bit of both. I mean, I think that um, to Layla's point, I also love a well-researched and written proposal because it demonstrates like that this person is thinking and then curious to see how they'll think through with photography, you know, to execute. There are some cases where the research is just really brilliant, but then this is visual storytelling at the end of the day. So sometimes photographers can get too, so caught up in the research, right? That the you know photography doesn't necessarily line up or match up. Um, so that's something to consider or something that I consider. Um, but I definitely feel like, you know, especially I really appreciate learning about the world and multiple perspectives. And so I think that in terms of topics, um, what I'm drawn to are stories that, um, photographers are either uniquely positioned to tell those particular stories or, you know, their research is, you know, really strong. Um, or it might just be, you know, an issue that most people don't really understand or know about. I mean, I think like expanding understanding for me is a really important quality. So not that someone couldn't take like a, a few of these, you know, it's like the visual representation is not necessarily doing anything new. So although you're like, you know, of course you care about the topic. Um, I think at this point in visual storytelling, you know, it's important to really, you know, try to find a unique way of seeing, you know, even if it's a topic that we're familiar with. Um, otherwise, I feel like we're just like socialized to just see the image quickly. And then, you know, our minds are like reading through the archive of ways we've seen the topic before. So I love it when someone's approaching a topic and I'm like, you know, uh, curious to know more and then their visual approach is like there's an element of surprise there or of um, you know like a distinct point of view you know or a visual language that's you know experimenting or trying or looking for a new way to express yeah that's wonderful you know the the Alexia exists in large measure for educational purposes. So that's part of the reason I'm asking these questions is to, and for the students in this room, those that will see it and professionals and what they can learn from what you're saying. So it's not just like in out and let's move on kind of judging process. So thank you. That's great. And it's such an honor to be here too. I'm sure that my fellow jurors feel the same way, you know, Absolutely. this is a very special invitation so thank you all right so uh zoe should we start back at number one and march through again and are you okay with uh determining whether to move it forward from a grid view i am um, yeah grid view is good okay so would any of the three of you like to move this one forward um, I, I would move it forward for now, yeah. Um, 
likewise, and I'd like to, I'd actually really like to hear from um, Leela and Joshua about, you know, being that you guys have photographed what's happened in the streets, I'd be curious to talk to you all more about this particular application. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing that really stood out to me was this, like, um, the use function, which I think when people are doing a recording, you know, injustice and protest, there is like a, you know, a school of, you know, cop watching this question of like, if you're gonna um, be documenting and providing evidence, that's not always about getting the best picture, right? It's also about getting the badge number of the arresting officer. And so I, I appreciated that in the proposal, there was some thinking in that direction. So that's something that, um, you know, my main reason for moving it forward, I think is that. And then I'm curious to talk to you guys more about what you think. Mm -hmm. Okay, and second one. Uh, yes, I would like to move this forward. Okay. Feel free to say things, but no expectation at this point. On list. Curious, Joshua, was this on your list of further um, um, Yeah, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. Okay, and number three. Um, I like you know, large I, photos for me. Yeah. I think I'll need if you can just blast through them. Maybe. Okay. What were you gonna say, Layla? Yeah, I, I I like this, but I was just very curious about um the the author of the you know this photo and this project was um speaking about this element of resistance um and as a cultural expression i didn't really get that in the photographs you know so i'm just trying to see you know what like the meat of it is you know their photos are beautiful but i just didn't get that part of it you know so i'm just trying to figure out whether to move it forward or not, not 100%. I was gonna say no, um, for, for me. Um, I, I also think that there are some really strong images here, but it's not one that I would move forward at this point. I mean, I'm happy to talk about why more, but if, you know, yeah. leave it at that for now. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So since I'm up in the air about it too, then you, we can leave it back. Okay. On to number four. Um, for this project, I'm on the fence. Um, I'm on the fence right now. Yeah, I'm also on the fence too. You know, it's dealing with COVID and um, I'm just curious about, I guess, what the representation of, you know, 100,000 people dying. I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm on the fence about this, you know? I think for me, this was one of the cases of, um, as student work, I actually think it's a great effort. I mean, it's like this person clearly was very thoughtful and thought about a project to do and executed the project and had this other layer of participation. I think like from that standpoint, it's kind of like a, you know, A for effort kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, um, I don't feel like I could, you know, move it forward to the next round um, in consideration of the other projects that I feel like, you know, really um, I would advocate for. This is one yeah, that I honor the yeah. effort, you know, but I wouldn't, I couldn't say that, you know, yes, this would be like a finalist. I, yeah, I think this would also, I think it would benefit from a stronger edit. I think there's too many, just from the visuals here, there's too many, um, uh, kind of, uh, there's like three projects here. <laughs> I think that some elements aren't needed. And I think that, you know, some of the elements were taken out, it would be much stronger visually. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the diptychs are giving me before and after, and I don't think that's needed, you know, the before 
colored and then after, but then also the families in front of the house. Um, I think it's too much right now. So there's some good ideas there, but I, I think it just needs to be conceptualized a bit, a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would be enough for me. Yeah, I agree. I think um, you know it is a lot going on. I really love the first set of portraits. They're the like the composition is you know very plateful, and you the photographer is using a lot of symmetry and they're being creative. And I think that um, with but just that it would have been a lot stronger for me, you know, but um, the second element of the multimedia and then the collaboration, that's, that's like a whole nother thing happening. Okay. So it stays here for now. Number five. Um, I, go ahead, Leila. No, you go ahead. I mean, this was in my yeses. And I think one of the, the reasons is because, I mean, I'm thinking about, this is like a, an example of like, you know, uh, in a student, whatever, when I'm thinking about like maybe being, I don't know, in your early twenties and thinking about your heritage and how to represent it and experience it. I think that, um, there are like some surprising images here. You know, there's some really um, intriguing images. And I feel that maybe it's a little bit of that sense that I mentioned earlier. Like, I like that I understand the, the reason that the photographer is doing the work. And at the same time, there are some images here that I'm, you know, really curious to know more. And so um, I put this in my yeses. Yeah. Um, I also had this as a yes. I love the exploration of identity, heritage, especially in the case of, um, you know, the um, Kurdish community, you know, being the a stateless community. And um, I feel that that's a story that that is worth being shared, especially from a personal standpoint. Um, the one thing that the I was curious about this platform that the photographer was going to create. And I'm wondering how accessible that would be to um, the community that it was intended to, you know, um, because the photographs depict a very um, rural kind of place of being. And I'm just wondering how the person was going to kind of merge those two um, entities in this project. Okay. So I'm hearing move it forward. Joshua, you have ideas on this one or do you want to just say? Yeah, well, I, I was also on the fence with this one. Um, I think you both kind of touched on probably why. You know, I'm interested in seeing more, but um, I'm not sure that what's here along with the proposal um, gives, gives enough for me to say yes. Um, but we can move it forward. I mean, you know, there's, you know, I think if, if even if one of you does want to move it forward to consider it, mm -hmm. and I, I'm guessing that once you have elevated a certain number, then you'll, you, you've raised the bar and then you'd be able to compare them at another level. I, I didn't have this as a move forward. Um, and yeah, I didn't have it as a, a yes. I'm curious to why. I had this as a yes. Um, yes. I think for me, I it's, it just, it's like this sense of um, just a committing to a story, committing to you know, uh, there's got to be a better word for subject, but, you know, just, again, like, I see the effort, you know, I, I see, and again, I'm not sure that I would advocate for this all the way through, um, 
but I just see like a sense of really sticking around and trying to, you know, represent this. So for me, I had it in a yes. Okay, well, let's move it forward for now. Yeah, this, this was a no for me. Um, I didn't see the way um, the way this particular family was in relation to the new kind of movement and migration into in their community, you know, which was I felt like that was the like the kind of main point that this in the inward um, what was what was it called like the uh, the the people who are living within the mountains, you know, there's this influx of people coming in. And that is affecting this particular community, the physical community, the social community. And I, I didn't see that at all. Um, so it was just kind of like, okay, well, not sure about the thesis of the project matching up with the photographs. So. Joshua, I'm curious, do you have, cause I'm like, I can be very outspoken, so. <laughs> Want to make sure I don't. Well, gorgeous. Yeah. And I think it's um, gorgeous imagery. Uh, you know, beautiful photographs. But um, with the proposal, I don't think it lines up with the photographs yet. I just don't. I don't. I don't see um, it. Um, So I had this one down as on the fence, but you know, if it's, can you um, can you enlarge the images for me again here? Yeah, no, I, I you know, as far as like fragile ecosystem, um, you know, the new, you know, even even with the new kind of tough. I just, um, it doesn't dig in enough for me. Same, it's interesting because when I read the proposal and hadn't seen the images, this was in my like, I put a star on it. Cause I was like, okay, we do need to consider this. Um, but then of course I feel just as you guys do, they're really beautiful aesthetic, you know, well-composed images, but it just doesn't align with what's proposed. So for me, it's a no. Okay. So I heard this does not move forward. This was a no for me, mostly because um, it's a very particular type of photography, you know, very based in kind of like, you know, an NGO type of storytelling, which um, nothing wrong with it per se, but, you know, I'm just like a little bit to Layla's earlier point of like, you know, how does this benefit the people in the pictures or, you know, what's the, What's the why? Like, how is this going to have, you know, an impact or an effect? Yeah, I um, I liked it because it was it showed like the um, very concrete way, like the the way um, climate change was affecting this community was very evident. However, the there's no um, there's a lot, huge lack of intimacy there. I'm not sure how long this photographer, like the photographer doesn't seem connected to the people. You know, there was just something lacking for me in, in terms of the relationship, you know, with, with the actual people, their relationship to the land. Mm -hmm. There was just something missing there, but it does show climate change, like in this very physical sense. I, I would pass on it. We can pass on that one. Yeah. What did you say, Joshua? So yeah, we can pass on that one. Mm -hmm. Number nine. Okay. 
This is Death Valley, right? Yes. Um, what did I put? I like these images are very poetic. I mean, I've kind of seen the, the story before. I was interested in the caption of, um, there's a picture with a child with a gun. And if there's a caption, no, picture number seven, like what? Number six. Number six, sorry. I was cu curious about that caption. If there's a caption. <laughs> Children are playing just in front of a uranium mine at Jajagoda village. People live barely 500 meters away. In a, 1990, in a 1998 report, the Environment Committed of, Committee of the Bihar Legislative Assembly had stated that no village should be within five kilometers of the mines and tailing ponds. Mm. Can you enlarge the photo? I'm always curious and you know why you know what photos make the edit and if it adds to it or what's the kind of reason and context to that I actually I have this one as a yes I feel like for me the subject is the topic is really important mm -hmm. you know and it's I don't know I just I think that um there's a clear way of seeing, you know, to that earlier point, uh, Layla, to your point too, about like, you know, the kind of poetic approach. And um, there's just something in this that like actually stirs me to like, you know, really care and find out more, right? Like this is a, I feel that the photographer has a real sense of the issue and yeah. um, is really trying to help us understand it and giving us these kinds of like, you know, beautiful images almost like as a way in you know um yeah. so that's for me this was one of my six yeses to move forward i also had this as a yes as well okay let's move this one forward Invisible students. I wasn't sure about this because one, of course, the, um, you know, the photographer submitted something different, which, you know, that's perfectly fine. But the proposal, what was pr presented in the proposal um, seems as though it's, it would be something, uh, had a reportage approach, but then like portraits because the, they were going to, um, show adult victims um, and ju juxtapose, juxtapose with um, younger people who are victims of bullying too. So I was curious about how that would look as well because the adult victims, they would be, you know, their story would be based on memory. So I was curious about just the, the final way this project would look, you know. So I didn't, I didn't have it as a yes. I just had a lot of questions. When is it discussed? <laughs> I, I had this as a no. I had this as a no as well. And for one, for me, it was just a glaring omission of how race and ethnicity plays into bullying, you know, especially in Germany. I mean, I feel like when I read the proposal, you know, it's intriguing and I'm looking at the pictures and it's just, I think that those two things cannot be separated from each other. And so I, I think that just that, like, no mention, you know, that, um, and then the representation, I, I don't know, there was just something there that felt like, you know, without considering the way that race and ethnicity uh, plays into bullying in Germany, especially considering, you know, immigrant populations and that kind of thing. For me, it was a real, um, I just, I can't move it forward because I, I just, that's, that's a, big important point in terms of research that they should be more familiar with or at least be able to make explicit. Sure, sure. I was curious about it too, like um, kind of exactly where, which communities they would be exploring in Hamburg, you know, so and how that looks. And so that's something I was curious about well and was concerned about as well. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So we move on to number 11. Sean and Lashania. That is helpful just to reread the title. Thank you. I mean, the one thing I'll say is that this, I think, um, really would greatly benefit from like some of the kind of archival storytelling. Like when I'm thinking about what these two individuals have lived through um, as a potential, right? Like, uh, I think sometimes that's overused, like, you know, incorporating archival images to flesh things out visually. But in this particular case, I'm actually really curious about, um, you know, what were, what are some of the circumstances or what are some maybe archival materials that could help to, to build out, you know, the story and mm -hmm. the fact that they spent, you know, 10 years, you know, a really significant amount of time um, incarcerated. Yeah. I agree with that. I think um, that would be a smart way to move forward with this project because I think that photographing them um, on print, I'm trying to figure out like why would that be significant, you know, because I was just curious about that. But if we have context on where they come from through the archival, archival photographs and whatever else, I think that would be a much stronger um, approach to continuing this project. And also, you know, I was curious about the photographer's relationship with this couple. I, I don't believe I saw that. And that was just, um, just curious about how they encountered one another and what that story was like, you know? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I thought the same. I think that it does not dive into the story. These photographs don't dive into what was written at all. Me. Um, and yeah, that's it for me. So I actually had it as a no. Yeah, I had it as a no too. There's a, a line in there that says, I want others to see them how I do. So that just, I was curious about what exactly that meant. And just this like assumptions made there too that concern me. I had it as a no. I do think there's some really like lovely moments, you know, in terms of like mm -hmm. the intimacy between the couple that were striking and that are like definitely, you know, I yeah, I mean I'm also a no, right? But I just wanna hold up the parts that I think, you know, really did work. And I guess Maybe that's a question for you guys at Alexia, like, would you ever, like, is that something you would consider doing is essentially like, or maybe not necessarily making it available, but like understanding what the, you know, photographer's relationship is to the subject. Um, just cause, you know, that's what I'm hearing from Layla too. It's kind of- We're figuring of out. You know, you don't want to assume or presume or, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, I think we're all, no. I guess part of what I'm hearing is that sometimes the present tense documentary approach doesn't touch the, the breadth of what needs to be expressed. Yeah, and they also talk about how he, they're activists, right? So like in the proposal, it was like they work on like, you know, violence prevention and that kind of thing, but it's not represented in the picture. So it's just, uh, this is a good, you know, foundation to building that relationship, but they really would have to, you know, stick with it. I mean, I, you know, strongly encourage them to keep going. Sure. Okay. That's really good feedback. Uh, on to number 12. Eight out of 10. Uh, this is beautiful, but I, I also had it as a no. Um, I just didn't see the need for, um, I don't know, it, it seemed like they already had a grasp on, on this story and, and the logistics and, and 
making it happen, documenting it. So I didn't see where the foundation would come in to add to what was happening. Um, this is one when I like read proposals, I had it like highlighted, you know, first round. And I, I really also, again, you know, this is like very good student work, right? Like in my opinion, like this is somebody who their family has lived through something really difficult. They had the courage to pick up the camera and make some really thoughtful pictures of their family. And so, although I wouldn't move it forward at this point, I think it's definitely worth acknowledging that, you know, um, it's, it's well done and it's hard, you know, especially if you're like, you know, living through that and, and trying to represent it photographically, so. For sure, the images are, are beautiful. They're moving, they're so intimate, um, but I would leave it back for sure. But I would encourage them to keep on going. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I, I had it down as a, as a no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to number 13. Um, And just the title on this one was Down in the Delta. Thank you. This was another one where I I really felt that they they barely were scratching the surface, you know. Um I didn't have a lot of confidence in this story. I, I didn't particularly love the edit either. So I, I had it as a no. Um, yeah, even in the proposal, I was just kind of like floating on the, the surface level of, of what was happening in this community. Likewise, I, you know, for me, when I, you know, saw the images, a lot of times I ask, you know, were, the, were all of these taken in one day? But for me, it just looks um, like there could be more time spent and then the, uh, the proposal would be reworked um, after that. Um, yeah. Yeah, same. I think there's a few single images here that are, you know, Nice images, but I wouldn't advocate for moving it forward. Okay. Leukemia fighters. Um, I had it as a yes. I I had it as a yes. Um, <clears throat> I love the kind of gesture is making in creating an archive of these children's lives. I think the portraits are, are poetic and, and beautiful and, and gorgeous. And it's a straightforward project. Um, I, I liked it. I did like it. So I did have it as a yes. I have some thoughts, but I'm down for moving it forward for sure. I think my main thing is that um, I, I find the images incredibly compelling. I guess I also am always concerned when I see projects like this. Um, uh, I, I want to make the assumption that these are being produced like ethically and thoughtfully and that, you know, when people use photography as therapy, I think that that's a really wonderful thing. Um, I also think it needs to be demonstrated in terms of methodology. So for example, you know, if these are children that are about to lose their lives and this is, it, it you know, imbues the photographs with like a real sense of like, they're incredibly striking and it's just like, you can kind of get into the thought or the experience. Um, you know, just my thing is that that's, that's a lot of like trauma, you know? Um, and so that's, the part where you know they're undeniably very beautiful images i just maybe would be curious to know 
you know, what are the ethics, what's the methodology behind the work? Okay, okay so move it forward for now. There we go. Joshua, what did you think of those? Beautiful portraits. Something only we know. Yeah. I mean, that title also is like, have they researched? I mean, I would say no. Like sex no. abuse, like there's, there's like, you know, the, the scouts used to segregate, like, oh, like if you're gonna do this story, then you really need to understand like, the history. And again, like there are some nice images here. Sorry to like jump in so quickly, but yeah, but the title, I was like, oh man, like ooh. <laughs> if you wake it up, you know, then you really have to address it because yeah. I understand maybe that's not their, I, you know, this is probably something that the, you know, student experienced firsthand. And for that, there's some good images, but sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. With, I'm, you know, we're on the same boat with this one. Uh, just a lot of more research needs to be done, a lot more context needs to be included, especially speaking about the uh, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts of America, you know, there's a lot of history there that coincides with, of course, American history, which is also, you know, <laughs> is rooted in, you know, systemic racism, etc. So, you know, you have to kind of take that into consideration. And especially if you're looking at this community um, on a you know statewide statewide scale, um, that kind of diversity needs to be represented as well. You know? Well, I look at it from a standpoint of, you know, what's left unsaid. I, I am left here to assume that this person did do the research um, and knows and chose not to uh, confront it within the project. Mm. Uh, so it would be a no. Interesting. For context, um, this was an out of the US submission. So were you saying like they should have done context on the Boys and Girl Scouts in America as well for their project? Well, just yeah. for What'd you say later? Oh yeah, no, sorry. I was I was mistaken. I'm sorry. No, that's a really yeah. I mean, I'm of course doing things. I see that through an American lens, so that's that right. right. on me, right? For not, mm -hmm. or maybe having that project location might have changed it. Yeah, I completely. I I saw that, but I don't know why. I just overlooked that. Just brought me straight to America. So big mistake on my part, but. Kind of the same idea, you know, Great Britain, um, Germany, same things uh, kind of apply to. It, well, yeah, it's still, it's still a no. <laughs> right. I won't, yeah, what's left unsaid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you do embrace subject matter that, that is dimensional, you have to represent the dimension it's that. Um, hearing can't just be one layer right, right. Um, okay so move on unintended consequences I had this as a no. Yeah, I had it as a no too. I, I didn't even have any notes. I was just kind of like, well, it didn't do anything for me. I think, um, yeah, and for me, the visual language again, you know, it's like, if I really feel like I've seen some of these images, you know, I don't know, there's just not enough kind of coming through for me. Um, and the, you know, the proposal was well researched, um, but I think anytime you start with from an age of five, almost every girl is forced into child labor within the premises of their homes. You know, when you start making 
uh, I just, you know, I'm not saying that that might not be true. It's just, there's something about the approach to me that's like raising some red flags. Like mm -hmm. this may be an example of a very well-researched proposal, but like, you know, um, and, you know, just to be very honest, like that kind of like traditional NGO photography for me is uh, very fraught. And so it's, I'm not able to move it forward when I'm seeing these kind of threads of certain types of thinking, so. Yeah. Okay. Number 17. <laughs> Um, I was intrigued by this project, uh, <clears throat> and um, but one thing I and I you know I love some of the images and I know that this photographer is requesting new gear in this this proposal. Um, one of the things he's uh, they're requesting is that. Um, but I was just curious about how the documentation of ballroom will happen um, in the age of COVID coronavirus and what would be like the contingency plan to uh, kind of follow this story, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, you know, they are a part of this family, the House of Monet. And um, if there's no ballroom activity and, and so then how would that story look outside? You know, what would be the, the kind of reroute of the story. And I'm yeah, just curious about that. I had this as a definite possibility. I think that the edit could, I think the sequencing could be better, mm -hmm. uh, but I see like a great potential, but also in the proposal, um, oh. just the description of, um, uh, you know, the ballroom culture, which does, you know, it extends outside of the actual event, like an event of a ball. So I can, I can see how they might mm -hmm. um, document. I just, you know, and it's, it's shown here. Um, I just wish there was a larger amount of photographs, um, but I, I did have it as a yes. Yeah, I also had it as a yes. Um, yeah, I, I had it as like a strong maybe. And I think, you know, again, when the photographer is really coming from that first person, like when I'm reading this proposal, I am compelled by, you know, the person's story, their proximity to the, you know, story itself. And just thinking about when I see projects like this, it's like, a yes with some type of like um, mentorship or access to, you know, an editing session with Joshua or like, uh, you know, a, a session with Layla on like how to use your iPhone. You know what I mean? To like take pictures. Cause that's the only thing too, that when I see, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, I strongly believe that, you know, it's not about the tools you use, but how you use them. And so for me, the one thing that I saw in the proposal that I was like, you know, I'd love to talk to this person and really encourage them to like use a phone maybe, you know, um, and not necessarily feel so tied. Um, but I think that the proposal was, it's really hard not to move it forward because you really get a sense that this person is like, you know, really wanting to grow yeah. and has tremendous access to this very, you know, unique and very special community. So yeah, that was definitely uh, a yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, one of the appeals. I love the first person, um, personal storytelling from the first person and that access and proximity is just like key. So that was one of the appealing things to this story. So I, that's one reason why I said yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somewhere else than here. I had this project as a yes. Yeah, I also had it as a yes too. I thought it was so um, beautiful, uh, mystical. I, I really love the, the images of the, um, 
and kind of the objects, you know, it, it made me feel like I was um, looking into the minds or imagination of the people who were photographed. I love the usage of, of that. Mm -hmm. And um, just the, the portraits are really just beautiful, dreamy, well composed, color, just everything about it. And uh, of course, the subject as well is very compelling too. So I did have that as a guest as well. It's very intimate as well. Yeah, I agree. I think it wasn't initially a yes for me because when I read the proposal, it's like the proposal felt like very kind of straightforward. Um, mm -hmm. But then of course, this was a case where when I really looked at the pictures, it's like you get a sense of a very kind of unique visual language and a really like, you know, um, someone's really thinking through how to connect, you know, emotions to aesthetics, you know, and so I think that I'm definitely down for this to move forward. Okay. Two more. I had this as more notes. My, mine was no too, Leila. Yeah, mine was no. It was just very general. I was, yeah, I also had it as a no. I guess, you know, to your point, when I saw the videos, you know, I'm realizing that this is maybe like reportage or something that the photographer, you know, experienced firsthand. I think that, um, you know, it's, it's again, this question, I think lately brought up a good point about like feasibility or what do you do? You know, is this person still living in Syria and experiencing this? And if not, like, how would they approach the idea or the topic? Um, without physically being there. And I think that maybe that's the piece that was really missing um, here. Yeah, absolutely for sure. And even this edit, I am not uh, crazy about as well. You know, just everything is kind of photographed at the same scale. You have pictures that are canceling out one another. So um, I think the photographer, you know, should continue, but just kind of think more through it. I wouldn't move it forward. But it does get me thinking about like, you know, the the like trauma and lived experiences that people go through, right? And you know, I do have like a, you know, especially if this is a student and especially if this is a young person that like lived through this, you know, I um I don't know, it just it has to be said. Like this is a, you know, an insane uh, thing to have to live through and to have the courage to like pick up a camera and take pictures through it, you know. So once again, it's not that I advocate for a yes, but like, you know, it's a, you know, holding some space for like, you know, how difficult, you know, it must have been to experience that, especially if this is a young person who, you know, is now maybe a refugee or, you know, going through some challenges. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Number 20. Yeah, thank you, Kyle, for sure. This one, I'm on the fence. Um, I think that um, there, you know, the, the work again shows great potential. Um, in the proposal, the proposal, you know, proposed, um, you know, telling this story from all of the, you know, all of these different themes in one story, you know. Um, that they would begin to explore if they stay, well not stay, but travel to these um, other sections um, from like uh, class, well, class, well, feminism, um, fashion. And um, I'm not seeing it here because this is very specific to one, one, um, one story. So I'm curious to how they would do all of that and, and what um, other stories that would start to dive into um, I don't want to say it's like over or really ambitious, but I, I would like it to be the proposal to be like narrowed down a bit. Um, I think that's the case that we've all been seeing as far as like a overly researched and ambitious proposal and not seeing, you know, the evidence within in the work. I really, I'm curious, Layla, what you think, because for me, this was a it was a pretty strong yes, just because I got the sense that this person has like proximity and real experience, like lived experience in this. But as someone who spent more, much more time in West Africa than I have, I guess I'm curious about like, where are you 
on this one? Well, I have this as a yes because I was intrigued by uh, the story. However, I thought it was, I thought it was a, a really big project, and I felt it could have benefited by um, could have benefited by being narrowed down um, because I've when I was in Lagos, I have encountered people who were cadets, and I had never heard of that before um, before that particular visit to Lagos, and it was very intriguing as well. Uh, but there's specific experiences, I believe, that um, is happening in different states in Nigeria with regards to uh, being a cadet. So I thought that um, just kind of narrowing down the story a bit, I, I really like, um, of course, some of the frames in here. I think the edit is it's a wide edit, but I'm not too bothered by it. I like the uses of graphics, um, but I do, I am, I would be more interested in an experience, a, a very specific experience, either in, you know, Puja or Legos or, you know, very, to show that context of where, the context of how that city or that state um, kind of affects the experience of the cadet where they are, you know. So, yeah. yeah, I appreciated the kind of cartography too, though, that like there was a seemed to be a real acknowledgement uh, to your point, Layla, about, you know, each region is quite different and each experience is quite different. Um, I guess maybe and I could be totally wrong, like this might be a case where like I am presuming that this is like an insider take, you know, um, and for me, like, I think access is you know, one of the most important things for photography. I mean, it kind of goes back to the, you know, House of Monet a little bit, you know, it's like, um, yeah. I, I just, I get this sense that like, I'm getting a real like interior view about what this experience is. And I guess for me, that's what's really um, compelling. So I guess that's what's hard about like the, you know, like blind process or not knowing that kind of background in the photographer, it's like, you don't want to yeah. assume, you know, you can't help, but it's just, you, you don't know, but yeah. It's, that, it's, it's different. It's definitely different than um, some of the stories that, that we're used to seeing, you know, coming out of West Africa. So I, that's why I liked it. It was different. I'm exciting about it, excited about it. You know, let's, let's move it forward. Let's say yes, and then we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joy, would you just scroll through the ones that remain just to, to ensure that the, you all want to keep them where they are? Kachaka, front yard, a new kind of tough, climate survival. Invisible students, Sean and Mashania, eight out of 10, down in the Delta, something only we know, unintended consequences, more notes. Looks about right. Can we go through what we said yesterday? This is America. We lived in our heads. Where is home? After incarceration. Death Valley, Leukemia Fighters, the Monet Archives, Somewhere Else Than Here, Yours in Arms. All right.
Hmm. I feel like there's some that now, okay, we're getting this down to one winner and two runners up. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. I'm talking with a mute on. It's like a thing now. Huh? Very 2020. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I feel like we should uh, go through and move what you think are the stronger ones among this group forward into a second select group. And then from there, we can maybe go. I guess this, can I just, this is one where I could let this go, right? Um, I'm curious to hear from um, Joshua and to Layla, like being that you guys have spent time in the streets, like. So I was gonna say no, I, so no, I would say we can move that. Okay, Layla. Ooh, um, I'm, I'm intrigued by this um, police accountability mechanism. However, I, I would probably leave this one behind. I'm okay yeah. with that too. Yeah. Okay. Second. Who knows for that thinking, but yeah. Now when you see them like lined up next to each other, it just. Yeah, I'm, I'm still very intrigued by this story. Okay, we'll move that one to second selection. I was I was gonna say that could go for me. I'm still like there's something about this one. Oh, maybe can we go to the next and let's see. <laughs> sure. I could let this go. I I could also well I already let it go but okay cool I mean hats off for the effort but Joshua are you cool with that? Yeah I'm good with that. Okay. Um, dang. I'm, I'm up in the air. I don't want to let it go yet. For yeah. me, I think for this one, for me, it's like there's like singular kind of like great imagery photographs there. Um, hmm, you know, like number 15 is kind of sticking out to me. But, um, I'm on the fence. Right yeah, now. I'm a little on the fence too. Maybe let's keep let's, moving. Let's, let's keep it and then keep going on. Yeah. When I saw them again all together, I mean, it's hard to deny that this is, you know, very compelling. Can you enlarge them and go through them quickly? This is definitely tugging at my heartstrings, um, big time. I'm, I'm, my screen, these are cut off a little. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking of memory, you know, what these photographs would mean to the family and just, just kind of uh, preserving a, a sense of um, life and dignity. And um, uh, resolution and, and effort and it's kind of challenging going challenging this this uh, horrible terminal disease, you know. In pictures, like this disease wasn't everything, you know. It wasn't the entire identity. You know, it was just a condition and a, I just like the idea behind it. I love it. And then of course the, the photographs are, are gorgeous. But of course, well, you made me think about like how these came to be, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I'm seeing here, you know, that they're working with somebody facility designed to provide treatment to underprivileged people who are suffering from cancer. I mean, I think for me, like, 
it seems well researched and responsible. So I guess like my original red flag, you know, um, it seems like this person is being very thoughtful and is including, you know, the parents and the larger conversation and hopefully, you know, has access to resources to provide to them, you know, um, especially if it's therapy or whatever else. I mean, you know, that's the hard part too, is that heartbreaking to think that people end up letting their children die because they don't have the money, right? Like. There's so many things about this project that are really um, important, so. All right, let's move it forward. But I also think there's like a level of sophistication here. Like this is the piece where I'm talking about um, like what is qualified, you know, in terms of like student work versus like this person clearly has like a very strong sense of like practice and concept and output, you know what I mean? So I guess that's, it's hard to see like the house of Monet and this next to each other um, right. kind of in the same category because it's almost like it's functioning at another level, you know, which I think is part of its excellence, but just thinking about, you know, the students or the, what I envision to be a student or the stage at, of development, you know, that this grant is intended for. But undeniable, yes. And, have to hold it. <laughs> uh, how Simone, yes. Yeah, I say yes for me. Still. All right. That's also yes. for me. Also, yes, yeah, for sure. Okay. And number 20. Mm. <laughs> what do y'all think? Well, for me, I guess this one and the mining project, it's like those are, I'm battling with those ones. Um, <laughs> Let's make a deal. Let's cut the mining and keep this. No, just kidding. I mean, I hear what you're saying about the mining piece. I can't deny that it is a, you know, it's a much more classical story, you know, and I think that also, I think like, you know, Alexi, it's like, you also want in awarding, I, I don't know if this is true or not, Mike, but you want to like, you know, do you want to uh, award like a sense of innovation in, in visual storytelling, right? Um, is that like a oh, fact? Okay. Well, in, in the end, that's up to you, but yeah, certainly we're trying to expand the vocabulary. So maybe that's in, like in that vein, I would- Then yeah, I would get rid of both. I would get rid of this project and the mining. Those will both be a no for me. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if there's a case I can make here. Well, we have one more round, so. We hold it for now. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, powerful imagery is powerful imagery. It doesn't mm -hmm. require a unique approach or whatever. Just, instead, of, instead of instead of discounting alternative approaches, we're saying put them in the mix. Mm -hmm. Did you all want to look at number five again? Where is home? I think I have some unexplicable like attraction to this. I don't know why. Maybe it's just like reminding me of what it felt like to be like 20 and in search of like my ancestral roots or something, you know? Just mm -hmm. something is like really pulling me. Um, and just like a, you know, a sense of seeing, like really this person is like seeing, looking. And I think that that's great, but yeah, I think this project, you can really sense, you get a sense of earnestness here. And I, I love that about that. That comes through for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Joshua, what do you think? Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> it, is, it is the student competition also. So. Just wanted to remind everybody about that. Yes, yes. Um, and with the student competition, I'm thinking about how um, the, well, I guess that would be the assumption, but how the photographer would utilize um, 
the resource, resources that they will gain from winning this type of comp student competition um, and how that would benefit the project that's proposed and them as, as an artist, as a photographer. Um, that's what I'm thinking about. That's a good point. I guess I'm reacting to what was submitted, but not necessarily what was proposed. So I should probably look at that again. Yeah, because it's the proposal that they'll be, uh, you know, they'll be, that's what they'll really be working on, right. whether it be um, extending what they've submitted or creating a new body of work. So for the, um, if we go back, you know, to um, the cadets, uh, again, the proposal proposed almost like five new ways of making um, and so, you know, I would like the proposal to be narrowed. I think Layla also um, said the same thing. So it, it's not, I'm not discounting the work because the photographs are beautiful. I think that specific story um, uh, was also very interesting. But, you know, I, I do think that what was presented in the proposal could be more specific. Um, mm -hmm. So that photographer references creating a platform for other people, other kids to, to submit imagery or whatever memories or, as part of this project to continue to make pictures, but also create a space for others, essentially create a community. Yeah, I hope that this person is familiar with Susan Mizellis's work on Kurdistan. I assume yes. I hope yes. If not, they should know. Um, you know, oh man, okay. I'm looking again at the, um, Joshua, just really thinking about what you're saying about the project in Nigeria. Um, I mean, cause if we were, if this project, um, if there was someone proposing looking at like cadets, you know, in United States, what would we, um, I guess it would be, it would, would it be the same kind of critique of, you know, maybe they should look at the cadets in the South or in the West Coast. Or, I'm, I'm just trying to see um, something here about what it is that it's kind of holding me up, but what it is I'm attracted to about this project as well, you know? I, I totally, looking at this proposal though, Joshua, I totally hear you. Like yeah. looking at ethnic structure, class and wealth, skills, roles, feminism, ideologies and doctrine, fashion, patriotism, operations. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a little bit. And then the other part maybe that's kind of turning me no is just that it, this understanding of truth and fiction of military personnel all over the world, right? Like, I think for me, what's attracting me to the project is it's like extreme specificity. Like, I feel like I'm in, you know, basic training in Nigeria to become a cadet, you know? So the second it starts to like extrapolate, you know? I mean, I'm also thinking about like SARS, honestly. And, you know, this is like, I'm not sure when the proposal was submitted, but it's like, you know, um, Ooh, maybe that's another piece like of the research or at least of an acknowledgement that, you know, like where, <clears throat> where do these cadets stand in terms of um, their connection to the overuse of police or, so yeah, I'm kind of, the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of coming around to maybe, you know, um, as much as I'm drawn in by the, the images, I think I, I, <clears throat> the more I think about it, the more I share your reservations, um, Joshua. Okay. So did, just to confirm, did you wanna move number five forward? I, I really am looking to Layla here too. Like, what do you think? Um, well, <laughs> you both have me thinking now as well. I, I, I'm still intrigued by the, you know, uniqueness of, this project in terms of uh, the stories that have come through. Um, but there, yeah, there is some logistical issues that, you know, shouldn't be ignored, um, thematic um, issues that shouldn't be ignored in the proposal. So, um, 
so if those things are present then um and they're not present in the other projects i see how we can kind of leave this back Do you want to leave it here and then go through them again? I want to just. No, we could um, we can go. You know. So the next step would be to those you put into second selections. My suggestion would be each of you chooses one that you think is super strong, and move that forward, and then you can discuss what is left. Okay. So. But we're using what's made forward now. Almost, just I want to make sure number five was resolved, whether you wanted to move that forward. I didn't hear. I would like sure. to, but if, if either of the judges really feels strongly against it, I could be, you know, I'm, I'm reasonable, but. I think um, we can move the, leave the um, cadet piece in Nigeria back. And if you want, move the Kurdish piece forward. What do you think? I would be cool with that. Okay. Um, Basha, what do you think? Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Okay. All right, Zoe, do you want to go through what are in second selects? Thank you, Zoe. I've had to be in your role before and I was terrible at it. <laughs> Jumping back and forth from one thing to another. Uh -huh. We lived in our heads. Where is home? Death Valley. Leukemia fighters. The Monet archives. Somewhere else than here. Um, okay. I was like, is that a valid approach? Is there one that you're just, oh my God, that's it for me? Oh, to move it forward, because these are our second selections. Yeah, so if we can move forward, I think again, because we're still at two, four, six. Okay. I just want to get a gauge of what you think is the most powerful, each of you. Out of these, out of these six, like the, the wow? Yes, yes. Okay, can you scroll through them again? Would it help to see any of them full frame? Can you do Monet full, full frame? feel like this person would need a significant amount of mentorship. Well, if, if they win, don't they get like a oh, class? Yeah. Uh, they would have the opportunity to come here, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a really important story. Yeah, for sure. Sure. And actually just thinking about in terms of Black Lives Matter, I know here in New York, like, you know, yesterday was the Stonewall March, you know, every Thursday is like, you yeah. know, the big march. And that's where like the queer LGBTQI folks come out and they really like, you just, hmm. it's like almost like the engine of the movement in so many ways, right? Like. The night before I was watching the live streams and it was just, you know, the cops were attacking everybody on Times Square. But yesterday it's like, there's just um, such a surge of like energy, uh, you know, in this community. And I think that it is really important to think so, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess I already had my critique of the project with the edit, and just, but this body, it would need a stronger edit um, but of course that comes with the, the mentorship. I think there's some that would benefit from being, you know, a diptych. There's a lot of repetition here. 
Um, I'm seeing that, you know, a lot of these were made in the same day or in the same situation, but um, was that relayed in the proposal? Not necessarily. So yeah, it, mm -hmm. I, I love really the rawness of it. There's, yeah, a raw, there's a rawness to yeah. this project that I think is, is, is beautiful. And also it's something that we have not been seeing as photo enthusiasts or, you know, photo curators, educators. Um, we just haven't seen it. We haven't seen it or we've seen it and it has not been celebrated. And I, I do think these images are beautiful and the proposal uh, was very straightforward into what um, they're seeking to do. Um, and you know, and how they would utilize um, the resources that they're that they would be awarded. So, um, yeah, I think the fact that they get an opportunity to like learn, you know, this is where like once again looking at the like really fully realized, um, very important project on the children and leukemia. Like, would that person really benefit from coming to Syracuse? Like. Maybe, maybe not, but would this person benefit? Absolutely, you know what I mean? So this is where it's like, this question of criteria, I think is really important. Um, but anyway, definitely we move that forward, right? I mean, we're all- Move that forward, yep. Okay. Uh, I would leave back the- um, yeah, yeah. So now with the in context again like very important story but um yeah i would also joshua i'm assuming you too would let this one go oh yes mm -hmm. okay <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and i love it 14 and 18 I'm gonna uh, go through those again Oh boy. So can you go to um is it um what's the title? The last one there. Someone somewhere else than here. Ye I think so. Yes. And then full frame. That's a yes. I mean, we can scroll oh. through for me as a move forward. Yeah, I think so too. I think this is a like I love this one. Kind of undeniable, like you know. And my thought is, we could take a, another short break after we've done this, just to take a breather and come back fresh. So determining. I could honestly let this go. I mean, I appreciate it. I definitely also hope that this person is in therapy and getting the support that they need, you know? Um, I, I, uh, sorry, that's just me. I mean, we could, we could keep going. I don't know if anyone else feels. I, uh, I don't want to let it go yet. Okay. So move that one down to third selections, would you, Zoe? Okay. Um, can you scroll through what's left at the top there? That one. That one can go, right? That's yeah, that, that's a no. That's a no for me. And the last one? Uh. Um. Man, so we're talking about how the photographer can benefit from the resources that they'll get if they win. Um, yeah, this project, the main thing is they wanted to um, create a multimedia piece, I believe, including the um, parents. Uh, Um, am I missing? Am I missing? No, I'm, I'm trying. Some, you know, what new elements to the project that they'll be including? Yes, to you. Yes, they said 
they wanted to make a small 30 minute multimedia piece where they would interview um, some of the kids who were affected and their families. See, this is this is where I do have a little bit of concerns, honestly, to, to that earlier point. Like these images, Layla, I think you really nailed it. Like they're beautiful, like mementos for the family. Like I really appreciate how the children are engaged to live out their imaginations. I'm a little concerned about a photographer. I'm not clear on their training and interviewing, you know, highly traumatized people about their experiences with their children dying from leukemia. There's just still something in that that is like, for, for what audience, for what purpose? I, I guess I may be a little bit stuck on that part. I think it's legitimate for sure because that's not mentioned at all. And I think that's an important, um, you know, element, you know, output, audience, um, ultimate, you know, um, destination and presentation for this project, you know? the big why and the how. I mean, it's almost like if this was an award, like, you know, like this is a wonderful project, very well executed, you know, it, it's just, I'm just wondering about what comes next and then to what end, you know, is it to raise money for, for children who are dying of leukemia, whose families can't pay for it? Is it like in this, I see like the kind of use function, right? Like the beautiful image, these are likely, you know, gelatin fiber prints or whatever, like they become a precious object. Um, and I think that's where they draw their like inherent value. Um, so I think for me, and again, like op very open to discussing it, but between this and the Kurdish project, I think for similar reasons that, you know, um, I would, I would pick the Curtis Project. Yeah, I think the Curtis Project is more grassroots. We know the kind of nature of it and where it's going. But with this project, you know, it is beautiful, but then those questions do come up. It's not simply just a personal project, obviously. Um, well, maybe, you know, but those questions do come up. What What is the bigger... Uh, picture and intention for this project, and that 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 could have been easily stated here. Okay. So uh, uh, I would say this: there's a motion on the floor yeah. to move. Uh, so, what do you think? Um. Well. I would say no for the for the portraits, and that's tough for me to say. But um, and I'm just taking into account um, what they'll be doing. Um, the multimedia piece, I think they'll pro they're you know they'll be doing it anyways. You know the, you know I think they have the support to complete the project. Um, and I, you know, I, I hope that they have been continuing it already. Um, you know, it seems like that there's always, there's already been a lot of effort put into it. So, um, yeah, for me, it's no. Okay. I also want to be clear for the, the Kurdish project, um, you know, that's something to consider. Is this person going to go back? No, right? Like, so what they're what they're proposing is to invite participation. Is that right? Am I understanding that right? Um, both, from what I read, both continue to make photographs and create this space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that what you read, Jess? Yes, um, they want to create another platform so that others who are trying to remember their stories um, can also contribute and that it can go around the world for others to discover. Um, they and didn't. they also, oh. Sorry, go ahead, sorry. 
Oh, they also mentioned the violence in Central Eastern Turkey. So I wasn't sure if they wanted to contribute to that as well. Yeah, with the um, the platform, they weren't um, very specific about how, well, not how, but what uh, they would be creating. Um, I think Layla said that earlier, though. Yeah, I was, I was, I had questions about that as well. What it was and how how accessible it would be, and mm -hmm. all of that. That's right. I mean, anything that is about participation. Uh, I hear you. There needs to be like a pretty clearly delineated plan, right? Like also building a platform is expensive and complicated. So, you know, that's the other piece is just, um, you know, is it realistic? Is it, you know? This is a digital platform, correct? Sounds like a website of some kind. Yes, mm -hmm. online platform were the words. I don't know. I mean, I think this one was very compelling to me. I'm wondering where else do we stand? What are the other two that are still in second selections? Oh, that should be, that's confusing us. That shouldn't. Yeah, we should move it. <laughs> move it out there. And, uh, and then. Oh yeah. So we said no to this. Mm -hmm. no. So the third are... selections is where the ones you've moved forward live. Can we put the Kurds in with the third selections? And then I totally understand if I'm like over advocating for this thing. No, it's fine, it's fine. It's railroading. Oh, that's great. And the hope is that you, in third selections, reside what you each think is your strongest or collectively think is the strongest. From this, you would choose the first, second, and third. So from this, we'll choose the first, second, and third. That's what you just said? Correct. Uh, well. Great. Can you scroll through quickly the four? So this one. Um, lived in our head. Where is home? The Monet archives and somewhere, somewhere else than here. Okay. okay. Can um, we do, you know. How about, how about taking a break just to. Yeah. Yeah, we could take a break. Just to give a come back, and then you might have a slightly more fresh perspective, or just let it soak in for a minute. That sounds good. All right, come back at like uh, twenty till. Okay, cool. All right. Put my lipstick on. <laughs> <laughs> So we're down to uh, four submissions, entries to consider, proposals, projects. I'm gonna start it up, Zoe. During the break, Jess had a suggestion or a thought. So wonder if she would present that idea to you three. Yeah, so I was mentioning that I found it really helpful to see how important your proposal or your supporting writing is for the images that you submit. And I appreciated you all like saying how the body of work as a whole wasn't really matching or how you were dissecting each of the submissions. I would like for this round, if you could incorporate what about the imagery is strong, what makes the, the images, um, like if, if it was the composition or if it's the lighting for you all, what stood out about some of them um, that you were looking for when you were moving them forward, if at all. Sure. So do you wanna roll through the four, Zoe, just to re-embrace them? Yes, you mean uh, full screen? Uh, context sheet for now, just to okay. ref refresh, and then whatever you all would like from there. Okay. We lived in our heads. Where is home? 
the Monet archives. Somewhere else than here. Can I actually ask that we go ahead and watch the associated video with that first story? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember like being pretty, it changed the way I experienced the work. Maybe it's worth revisiting. I agree. Mm -hmm. Eileen, can you re put that back in the chat space? It's just showing video in the Zoom platform just I have found doesn't generally work. So oh, I get it. Maybe we can um, we can all break and watch it mute ourselves or something if that's better. Yeah. So if you do mute yourselves and then just click on the link, it'll launch and come back when you're ready. to be as a child. Yeah, that's I found that very compelling. Okay. Leila and Joshua, are you ready? Yeah, I'm here. That's not ready. <clears throat> um, would you speak to the imagery itself and its creation and strengths. Can we enlarge the photographs? <clears throat> okay, I'll begin. Well, I think for me, what stands out with uh, this project is, of course, the inclusion of other elements. Um, in addition to, you know, the, the photograph, um, the text messages, the, uh, I think, hand drawn elements, the handwritten elements. Um, I think it does a good job of adding another layer um, to the work. But I think for, in some instances, it kind of takes away from the photograph at the same time. Um, so I think there could be more of a balance 
between the elements included. Now, if I, you know, if we're talking about the photograph, I think there's some beautiful light. Um, um, at times, I think there could be a bit too much. Um, whether it be um, a little sharpening added, you know, if we're getting the technical, I, I really don't like to get into those like those technical things. But sometimes, it, you know, I'm not going to get into it. Actually, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. But I do like um, the other visual um, elements added in as far as the archival um, processes that processes that she's uh, this person is working working through. I like the um, I echoing um, Joshua. I agree with you. I feel like the additional elements are compelling um, because there is a clear kind of like purpose, intention, or energy behind them. I think that sometimes this form um it's becoming more prevalent right it's like a way to get more information across and in, you know 10 slides or whatever um but i do feel like you know this person was thoughtful in terms of like the mark making aspect or the inclusion of certain texts i mean and also to your point joshua there is great use of light here i mean you know there are some strong single images here that are kind of like undeniably photographic which is also really Nice. Um, uh, I think the other thing that I'll say, or the only maybe, it's not, well, yeah, a bit of a critique is, you know, the whole personal is political or starting with the self. I feel like we're seeing a lot more of it. Um, and I think that it's generally a good thing. I think, and the fact that this is a student, um, how do you extrapolate this experience in a healthy way? Like, I do hope that this person is like, getting help and therapy and all the rest of it, but how do you turn this singular experience into something that resonates with others who may have had a similar experience of like, you know, fa family members with mental illness, like, you know, patriarchy and control. Um, like there's a lot of like bigger issues that are brought up by this project that I guess like there's still a gap between, you know, this is my personal story, which I think is totally normal and good for a student, to, you know, this is the larger issue that others may be able to, um, you know, tap into or um, really pull something from. So. Okay. Leila, I know you found this, like, this was on your tops too. I'm curious, like, seeing it again, what you think. Hey, you know, I'm just, I was just taken aback by how uh, vulnerable the student was in selecting a, a project to um, present for this grant. I mean, it's extremely personal, it's extremely vulnerable. And I, I really do love the added elements, but I was looking at um, the photographs, you know, out just separate from the elements. And I was really struck by the, the beautiful light, of course, you two mentioned the composition, you know, the, the different, um, uh, distances and, and um, you know, so you have, you know, lots of close up and detail um, frames, and then you have the, you know, wide frames that, you know, contextualize this person's life and what they're dealing with. I was, um, I was just really intrigued and kind of um, just like wanting to tip my hat to all, you know, the story of you give them using themselves to show what I am sure a lot of people can relate to uh, with regards to what you were saying, Nate Noel, uh, dealing with family members, particularly a parent who has so much influence on who you are um, and dealing and, and kind of navigating that kind of a, abuse in that situation. I, that's just something I was taken aback by. I was really like when people are um, just kind of generous and offering in that sense. And, and the photographs outside of the added elements were really beautiful as well, I, I thought that. Mm -hmm. I think if this person were to get the grant, I think there's a few questions that I would have for them. Maybe one being that in the proposal, you know, she talks about like Christianity and, uh, you know, and this like e extreme patriarchy, you know, um, I think those are things that are worth 
acknowledging or making present somehow in the work, because I think they're part of the work. Um, maybe, you know, concerns, of course, like it's always front of mind for me dealing with people who have experienced trauma is, you know, is this person getting the support and help that they need? I know that, you know, like the DART Center or something, like making sure that, you know, that person is plugged into networks or resources if they're, you know, college student or whatever. Um, but the only thing I'll say too is that always watching this language of like, you know, the word normal, and especially when you're, you know, because it starts out, my project originated from exploring my own upbringing in a seemingly normal middle class Boston household, right? Um, I guess that's maybe like whenever I see the word normal, I always challenge like students and photographers to really break down, like, you know, be more specific, right? Um, so, you know, religion, class, race, patriarchy, or whatever, patriarchy is such a huge concept, but, um, you know, the, this kind of like the norm um, is one thing that I would, you know, right. love to talk to this photographer about in terms of like uh, positioning the work and also, you know, understanding it within a historical, cultural, political context. Right, right. To also, um, I agree with you 100%. And um, I was just also curious about some of the technical deliverables, like um, they develop, developing a book, um, will it be self-published? Are they pitching it to a publishing house? I was just interested in that part of it, especially being a student and self-publishing a book and distributing it you know, that's a big thing. Ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just curious about that as well. Okay. Uh, anything else or move to the next? We can move to the next, I think. Where I mean, the goal is here is just to fully consider each one and then we can weigh in on what you think should be awarded. Does that make sense? Sure, sure. Uh, I've talked about this one a lot, so I'll like send yeah. that on this one. I, I also, you know, enjoy the, the, the mixture of portraiture, reportage, it, you know, both of those elements really bring together a full story of what um, the photographer is looking to present. And I, I'm, you know, I really like the, um, the kind of imperfections of, of some of the images, or the, the quirks and all of those things. I, I think that kind of lends to the photographer's kind of style and approach um, and also speaks to them um, as they explore, you know, what the story is and what it means to them and um, just their prize speaks to their processes and, you know, the methodology, you know, so I, I really do like that part of it. You know, the lighting is beautiful. There's some, there's some motion, there's some blur. You know, and I think that all works well together um, as a whole. It's that idea of, I sometimes call it rule of thirds photography, where you follow all the rules and by golly, then it's a good photograph. This feels, is, is this, I hear you saying, this is not that type of photography. Yeah, they kind of, uh, you know, Lead, you know, kind of following where the image is leading them, you know, and I like that. Also, can you go back one? I mean, this person is, is shooting black and white film, right? I mean, it looks like. And I, um, back one more. So, I don't know, you know, like, that's a good, like, range of tonalities. Like, this person maybe also, you know, I'm a sucker for, like, a good darkroom print or... Maybe not, you know, obviously it's not perfect, but like this kind of tactility of the process, I think is maybe another thing that I, sorry, I said I wasn't gonna speak, but <clears throat> now I'm realizing that maybe some of my attraction is also tied to this, to the form and to this idea that like this person was also in the dark room, like printing, you know. Um, and a good, exp you know, like, yeah, it's, there's, anyway. Joshua, I'm so curious. I feel like. Curious about what? Like, what do you think? You know, like formally about the pictures. 
Um, well, um, I don't believe I'm, you know, kind of like beholden to the uh, to the photographs, I guess. You know, um, technically, how they're technically uh, made. I think that. They are they are peculiar. I think that's what we're drawn to, you know. The um, like they're a little bit off, um, and it's something you can't quite put your finger on. That's it for me. I think way in the beginning, you know, I was on the fence and I think I'm still on the fence with this one. I think you and Layla both felt strongly towards this body of work. Um, and I was on the, I was on the fence. I'm still on the fence, honestly. So. Okay, so we have one more after one this. More. Or Maybe for me, the critique that's coming up most is, um, Joshua, something you said earlier about like the pictures feel like kind of they were taken in a day. Um, so I guess that's the, maybe the one, I mean, I'd love, I, I think there's great energy in the work and I think this person could greatly benefit from the experience. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of potential for sure. Some of the things I really love, like it's brilliant. And some of the frames I, I feel like they were more intentional about and then others were maybe just kind of made uh, without, with a little bit less of that energy. Yeah, I was going to ask what you, what you think are some of the stronger images in this set. Uh, oh, can you scroll through again? Mm -hmm. um, the next image here. I, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think um, with this project, um, And that they have said, you know, they, you know, in, in the title, it's, you know, the archive, but not just what already exists, right? It's the idea for me is very strong conceptually because um, they're building an archive that doesn't exist, saying, and, and there's a sense of urgency behind it that is undeniable, I think. Um, this idea of, 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 of documenting history in their own way and the urgency behind um, the fact that they're using just what they have, um, 
that's, you know, they explain, I'm getting this done. I've joined this house for safety. And I feel that it should be documented properly. Why? Because, you know, you can go through a long line of history of things being documented poorly or the, the, the or, or having the camera used, you know, as a weapon against these communities um, over and over again. So I like the kind of reclaiming of the image through this body of work and you can, you can see it. Um, and it's not parading like it's something else other than that. I like that too. Um, because a lot of times we get and we see these proposals that say, oh, this is what this project's gonna do. And it's, and we're also gonna name, you know, all of the ways that, um, you know, I'm gonna document this uh, community that's been traumatized, but it's usually often from, from an outsider. And I think they take a, a certain ownership behind the work that we honestly haven't seen in many of the proposals. Um, even, even with, if we go back two projects ago, um, we, there were issues in the proposal with a certain language around abuse, certain language around um, how one sees themselves um, in the greater context of, you know, somebody, somebody said patriarchy, right? So where, do you understand where you exist within that? Or where your family might exist within this um, notion, the notions of um, mental health? um and and safety um uh and america or or just countries in general um is there an understanding or will there ever be an understanding or are we just going to present this work as as you know as it, it just is what it is um and if, even if that's the case even if that's the case i think that um within the writing about the work that was their chance to say exactly what their purpose was. Um, and so, I think this one was the most clear on that. Because even in the next project, when we go to the next one in the proposal, it just described the work, but not about um, what they'll do to continue. You know, beautiful project, but but um, it also does not um, state the next steps, or even if there are next steps, is the project complete? You know, um, it may be, it may be. I had a very similar feeling about that next one. I don't know if we wanna, um, it's, not, it's so beautiful and it's so, it's like, it does feel complete. And I think that maybe, for me, it's like, once again, undeniable that like, this would win a prize, you know, in terms of like best of show, uh, you know, well articulated concepts, you know, strong control of, you know, technical understanding how to use photography to like imbue emotion and all the rest of it. Um, but it's, it feels very finished. Whereas like, if you go back, you know, to the Monet archives. I think there's something in this proposal that is really, um, so this person talks about being a foster child and that, you know, for me, like that's really resonant because it's almost like if, if at Alexia, if you're open to kind of like starting with the kernel and really like working with this person, I think, um, for me, that's like, that is like the overarching kind of metaphor for the project, right? It's like the, the, the notion of family, the sense of family, notion of family, obviously that's like a reference, but which who knows, like, does this person know, you know, all of these different, you know, historical projects, you know, that's the other thing historically is that, you know, trans communities of course have existed for a long time. Um, I'm curious about like which city they're in. I'm curious about like, the different generations, um, you know, of trans people in that community. Um, but yeah, I mean, that feeling of uh, really, uh, if this is about growth and about potential. So the one thing I'd say is that the family is really strong. 
The only other thing that I would really want to say to this person is really hopefully through, you know, an experience or a mentorship, um, just like the rethinking of the attachment of tools, like obviously a hundred percent, you know, having a better camera can change the technical quality of your images. Um, but I, I guess if there's any message back, if at any point we get to talk to folks is, you know, just using the tools at, at their disposal, you know. Let's um, be honest about that too. That's a nothing, but that's also a no for me to, to, to tell someone, oh, use your phone. When we all know, <laughs> you know, when people are look, looking at portfolios and so on and so forth um, for like, um, you know, selections, you know, to get, to get into school, um, portfolio reviews, so on and so forth. Um, I would have a hard time telling someone uh, that's been marginalized to, you know, um, go against the grain and use this, cam you know, to use this phone camera, um, but then turn around and already know that they'll be locked out of a industry um, because they don't have a camera. So I, I, I get the idea of, um, you know, Time Magazine has been photographed with a you know, an iPhone. However, there's only a certain person that can do that um, right now. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't, um, that's not the advice I would give. That's not the advice I would give. If the intention were to move into a commercial editorial kind of space. <laughs> No, I mean, I definitely hear that, that, that point mm -hmm. well taken. Mm -hmm. All right, do you feel like you're familiar enough with the work? Mm -hmm. Anybody wanna suggest a placement or elevate one to a top spot? Well, Monet Project is going to move um, to the next round, I believe, like, it just has all the elements of um, what a student, how a student benefit from, um, you know, either being a finalist, semi-finalist, all of that. So I would move it forward. I think it's strong enough, it fits. fits. Um, So essentially, one of these will not be in the semi-finalist folder. I, I would, you know, we were talking about, um, I'm just trying to scroll through the, uh, the portraits of the LGBTQ community in Bangladesh and how finished it looked, you know, and, and how they didn't include um, you know, what's, what's the goal, what's the objective and what's, what's going to be the final home. We just, it's just presented as this is a project I did. And so that's it. So we don't get a sense of what the resources will be used for if they were to get it. Right. They didn't even, I don't think they propose a new project or how they would extend this project that's submitted. That's what's missing. Um, that's the missing thing, like, are they trying to go on vacation? Like, what are they, what's, what are they trying to do? I'm, I'm joking. I know this is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah. everyone else, if we had to really be fair, everyone else is saying what they're going to do. And mm -hmm. the person is not. Yeah. I also think it keeps to that, like, I, I would, this honoring the student category too, I think is really important. Like, I think the other three, there's a sensibility that like, they're still searching, you know, and that the grant could be an opportunity to grow. Um, and there's areas where, you know, this could really make a big difference, you know what I mean? Um, as opposed to this one, which would be a certain like an accolade, you know, mm -hmm. and well-deserved, beautiful work. But um, just, I'm just noticing, we keep coming back to these questions, you know, um, 
especially with the Monet archives, you know, what it's bringing up in terms of like, you know, what as a jury are we seeing as like a through line or a like, you know, like if we're coming up with like a jury statement, you know what I mean? It's like, I think I'm hearing all of us kind of like resonating with this idea that this should provide like an opportunity, you know what I mean? Sure. Right. Um, as opposed to an alkylate. So I, I would actually be comfortable with like high honors, beautiful work, very well done, like removing this somewhere else than here. Mm -hmm. If you guys were open to it. I, I would be comfortable with that too, for sure. Okay. Joshua. I would also be comfortable with that. Um, great project, beautiful work. Um, but the proposal is what is uh, messing that up, so. All right, so Zoe, so would you move the other three to the semi-finalist? So we can safely say now, one of these three will be the grant recipient. <laughs> Anybody wanna suggest which one? To discuss or ones, grants, one yeah, the first place. Second. I would say the Monet project. I actually would be, uh, I'd be good with that, especially knowing what comes with it, right? Like, I feel like the other two projects clearly, you know, they've like had time to think and articulate and try, and you know what I mean, like get to a certain sense of like comfort. With photography as a medium, but you know, the Monet project has so much potential, and so it's hard not to get excited about this person, you know, having a, an opportunity like this. I agree with you too on that. What? Yeah. Well, congratulations, Monet project. And the finalists. <laughs> finalists. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's I wonderful. I, I appreciate the the roundness, the fullness of your considerations. It's not like a beauty pageant. Like, oh, best photo. I, I really feel like all of the winners of the winner and the finalists really do embody what a student um, winner would be in this this project, you know, I feel like we're honoring that as Noel said. So there's such a different projects too. I like yeah. the range there. Um, it's just the elements of the, the project, the potential um, of elevation of that project, right? Because it's about continuing. And then it's also about, um, then specifically the elements in the proposal, of course, you know, they all have shown that they can do the work, make the work with what resources they already have. And now the, uh, the thing is to apply for this grant to better uh, make this work. So I think that's what, um, I think that's what Monet, you know, the Monet project can do. That's what they can do with the, the, um, the opportunity there as far as um, taking courses, um, uh, expanding on that idea uh, or ideas within, you know, making that body of work, but also I think um, the what's the what's the title? I'm sorry, um, of the, the the project with. Um, we lived in our heads, or we lived in our heads. I believe, yes, yes, yes. We lived in our heads. I think there were some shortfalls within the proposal for me again. Um, and I think that needed a little bit what we're reworking, um, which of course they would have benefited from that with the, uh, with the classes. Um, yeah. Uh, um, and then again with, and then with the next project, I was still on the fence anyway. So, yeah. So would you designate a second place among number two and five? Um, 
second place between um, the Kurdish community and the parental, we live in our heads. Um, I, I would do the Kurdish as second place. I agree. They already know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like, I'm really, I'm very excited because I like looked up, you know, like, what are they going to, I mean, like, I'm really excited for this photographer. And I don't know to the extent that, like, that mentorship piece, you know, or like staying in touch, that's like, I'm really excited to see what comes of, you know, what you all are offering this person. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely down for it. I definitely just okay. with that, you know, considering. And then, yeah, so, so I would say too, the Kurd project is number two. And then the, you know, the other project is really also very strong and very important. So. Um, and all projects are first person narrative. Isn't that great? Like, yeah. Oh, well, look at that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So just a process thing. Zoe, would you move five to finalist? Just so we have that structure in place. So I was going to ask, uh, especially given that all three are very personal narratives, traditionally, historically, that was taboo. You know, you were your job as a photojournalist or somebody making a living with a camera was to not document yourself. You know, you're invisible in the photographs kind of mentality. So what's changed in the mm -hmm. dynamic here? When is it right, the right way? When it is, when is it an acceptable approach? And hopefully, well, not hopefully, I know. I know for sure that um, when people see these, the finalists and the, the recipient, they'll be encouraged to explore their own stories too. And, uh, and arrive to a deeper understanding of self. Um, and then I always tell my students, if you're able to turn that camera on yourself, now you're talking. Because um, for, again, like, you know, as photographers, we, we photograph others, 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 others. And sometimes, and more often than not, that turns into othering people um, or, pro or projecting onto others, right? Our, our own ideals. And so once you are able to turn that, that on yourself, you'll start to really see how things work. And I think that's what these artists are, are doing, whether it be photographing their own community, their household, self-portraiture, um, or both. I okay. think that, that what, what comes up when you are turning the camera on yourself and exploring the questions and the, the ways of inquiry um, is so thorough and it, it gets, it gets underneath so many layers that when you do finally approach a, a, a subject that's outside of yourself, approach it in a very, in a different way. And I feel like in a more uh, in a thorough way, humane way, um, I, I just think it has a positive effect on when you are looking to tell, to share a story about someone else because you had already made so many considerations um, when you, did yeah, turn the camera on yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I think I've seen examples where, you know, it gets like personal to the point of narcissistic. So I'm not saying that it always works because there are some times where it's like, you know, like why, why do I care, right? Like you still have to think about that question of audience. But I think this question of like objectivity and this that came up, you know, the normative, right? Like we're still, there's a lot of vestiges of like the role of the journalist as, you know, historically white, male, female, like, uh, you know, US, like upper middle class, um, this question of like, that is the norm or the normal, right? And so that like presumption of objectivity just presumes that like, well, that's the norm and everything else is marginal. Um, and thank God, you know, like, obviously where the post-truth can be taken and weaponized like you know the president has but like this question of like subjectivity is like a real path to a certain type of truth 
So like really knowing and understanding yourself, just echoing what both Joshua and Layla, you know, are saying is that that's like the, it's the starting point. It's like, and being reflexive and being really willing, because that's the other thing is that all of these recipients are having, they're, they're willing to confront things that are, a cha- they're trying to do a problem solving. Do you know what I mean? Like they're really looking at themselves, not like, you know, these aren't like highly stylized self portraits. You know, these are just like, you can see them thinking and processing their identity, their history, their current lived experience and through photography, with photography. You know what I mean? So I think that that's, in this case, like, especially in the student category way, I'm, I'm glad, I'm really, this feels right, you know, as opposed to that, um, you know, technical perfection or, you know, whatever, like, fully laced up concept, you know what I mean? Which for all of these photographers may come down the line, but this is- It's a know, good start, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really wonderfully said, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that was rich. Uh, <laughs> It's going to take a while to absorb all of this in a good way. And we get to do it again tomorrow. <laughs>